today we're going to start a new project. It's a small china hutch. Obviously it's quite quite small. I'm 5'7 and it's just slightly taller than I am. So it's quite quite small but I have an idea for it. I got this idea. I saw a photo. I do not remember who did it or I would be happy to give credit but I got the idea from a photo. So it is not my idea. Um, I like being straight up about that because it's only fair that you give credit to people who have thought of it before you. I'm going to try and reproduce it to the best of my ability. I've started cleaning it. Someone has already started to take the grill out. So we're just going to go ahead and pull that out. The moldings are not all off so I can't get the glass out yet. It is not an antique so don't stress. It's just a reproduction. I'm going to go ahead and try and get this molding out without breaking the glass because that will be most unfortunate. It's really loose. I don't know why it won't just give way. All right, even I'm not feeling comfortable about that one without safety glasses. I'm not real sure which was least safe. Me without safety glasses or me with really dirty safety glasses. All right, that's a little bit better. The culprit that's keeping us from getting that glass out is right there. It's a little nail. We're just going to see if we can get it to pull out gently without touching that glass. Ooh. I don't know about gently, but it came out. Now I think I can get that glass out easily. And then I can remove the rest of the moldings. Okay, let's put this someplace safe. Now we're just going to remove the rest of these moldings and they should be pretty, pretty easy now. Um, that way when we go to put the glass back in, it'll be a bit easier. Most important thing, when you are doing a piece like this, not everything is cut properly. So label each piece. Now this is the piece that was out whenever I received it. So I'm going to go ahead and label it first and just get you some blue tape and label it in a way that you will know how this piece goes back together. Because if not, later on down the road, when you go to put them in, you may find that things don't fit the same way. But if you put them back in in the same place they came from, you've got a pretty good chance. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove the rest of these little moldings. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hardware now and I'm gonna label my little baggie and that way I can put all the hardware in the little baggie. And I'm not sure, but we, we might use the same hardware, but we'll see. If not, I'm sure I will use it somewhere else. Okay, so now that we've got the glass out of here and the grid off, what we're gonna do is we're going to give this a bit of a scuff sand just to be sure that we've got no adherence problems. It's been cleaned, but we're going to go ahead and scuff sand it as well. We're just taking off the shine. Not really wanting to go through. Most of the time I would take the doors off of these, but this door, the hinges were actually put on with nails. Um, it's not an antique piece, but they've used traditional methods to build this with. Um, so it's a, it's a nice well-built piece, but it is not an antique. So I don't really want to take the nails out because sometimes when you do that, it's really hard to get them to go back in and stay and be solid. And at the moment, this this door has no movement, so I would rather not interfere with that. But nine times out of ten, I, I would take the door off. I could have used a sander to do this, but I'm trying not to break through the shellac um, so that I don't have to worry about bleed through. This being as red as it is, it would definitely bleed. Now I've just put a 220 on my little sanding mouse 
and that's just it's just taking the shine off now now that we have this piece all sanded down what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prime it with a Ben's shellac base primer and what that's going to do is it's going to stop any bleed through I have seen the question ask when I open my Ben's can to stir it it looks brown inside and they've wondered was that normal and yes it is normal this is a shellac based primer what it does is it's going to seal that wood so that it doesn't have bleed through and bleed through is when the tannins of the wood come through to the top surface when you've painted and you can see pink we would have a pink cabinet in if I did not bend this before I painted it white. So it's going to take at least two coats, possibly more, but we've got to stop that bleed through if we want this thing to be super clean looking. So I'm going to start doing the outside and I've just done this little section and already right here we've got pink. So it's very, very important to seal those tannins in while you're before you start painting. Oh, what have I done there? Goodness gracious, don't want that big old run there. And this will give good adherence to your paint as well as stopping those tannins. That's a good bonding primer as well as a stain blocker. Um, it's also an odor blocker, so um, a lot of times if you've got older pieces, they'll have, you know, kind of a musty smell where they've just been um, sitting or if you buy from a state sale sometimes those houses have been closed up for some time and that'll help with any any odors like that you can use it to um, seal in cigarette smoke it will work if it's not terribly bad and what what I use to roll with are these and they're cabinets doors and more they're um, whiz rollers and they are flock rollers. It's quite a short little nap like that. And so I don't end up with roller marks. The one that I'm using right now for this first coat, I have probably had it in my fridge for about a week. It's the one that I used for shellac last week. And so what I do is I put them in the fridge in a baggie and they'll save, but the shellac does kind of tear off the ends a bit um, after you've left them in the fridge that long. So just be aware of that. Um, you don't want that in your paint or in your, um, in your shellac. So um, be very cautious if you do that, that that could happen. And just pick it out or get a new roller which for the final coat I will get a new roller to be sure that that's nice and smooth but this coat this first coat I'm not too concerned and then for those hard to reach spaces I just use a chip brush because once you use a brush in this it's an oil base it's almost near impossible to get them cleaned out so I use something really cheap that I can just toss away and sometimes I'll keep old brushes that I know are on their way out the door and just keep them for this particular purpose and then that way I can just use those old roller ro old brushes for doing shellac and then toss them away after that it's kind of like their final hurrah. I'm sure they appreciate it. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to sand. You want to sand in between each coat of anything that you do because you will have, and there's no way around it, you will have little pieces like this, little, little tiny pieces of trash. And all you have to do is just run a 220 over it 
it'll knock that right off and your paint no matter what color will be smooth every time so you're not just sanding in between coats of paint you're sanding in between your coats of primer as well and use your hands run your hand over it you'll feel you'll feel little things that you can go back and then target most of it will come off just with one little pass after several coats of Zenzer Benz primer, this piece is still showing bleed through. So what I did is I put on a shellac in the areas that would not cover and just kept bleeding through. The reason that this happened is that the interior of this cabinet has never been shellac. So sure enough, that worked just beautifully. I'll let you see that it is now white inside all painted up all pretty the glass all taped up or where the glass would go we've taken glass out but we've got it taped up to where no paint can get on the inside so the inside's going to stay white and the outside is going to be this color it's a color that was a mist tint color um, that i've picked up um, and that's what we're going to paint it I've ordered a stencil and what we're going to do is we're going to try and do the apothecary in blue and these little tiny spots around here I'm actually going to try and do a gold there. I'm not sure if what I'm going to do here is going to work or not but if not it'll be a learning experience for both of us and you'll know what not to do. So I have a, a wax and I am waxing a bit of gold down here first. I want to see if this is going to stand out before I go any further. If it doesn't, then I scrape it off and we try something else. Let's see what that looks like. See if my plan is going to work. Hmm, maybe. Oh, this is going to take some time. Now I'm going to paint this. All right, let's see what happened. Hmm. We'll let that dry and check it tomorrow. Not so sure. And it looks, it looks okay. Let's look at it from the front side. Okay. Now, if we look real close, we can see a little bit of overspray just outside the lines. It's not real, real crisp. And that's okay, but it's not what I'm going for. When it's that easy to come off, then there's no reason not to do it again. So here we go for round two. I've taped off the rest of the glass. Now what we're going to do is... I have purchased some spray adhesive and we're going to spray this and hope that it cleans off. I don't know. We'll see. Just going to line it up. Seems to be sticking pretty good. Okay, so we got our gold again. We're working on this apothecary cabinet and I'm getting ready to spray my top coat and when I look the piece over I see that there's a gap here. 
and when it was stained it probably didn't show up that much but now it stands out to me so um and my ocdness i've got to fix this and we're going to take both sides of it just like you would if you were caulking a bathtub but we're not going to use silicone caulk like you would use on a bathtub we're going to use paintable caulk like you would use if you were um, doing, say, floor molding. So be sure that you get paintable caulk, not silicone caulk. I have my caulking in a caulking gun. You can buy just small tubes of it, but this is what I have to hand. So I'm just going to put it in there. Just like you would do a bathtub or a window. The tape is just going to save you um, the cleanup later. So once you've done that, just wet your fingers and then run it straight down, removing the excess caulking. And then just remove your tape and you'll have nice clean lines. Just take an artist brush and paint that and you won't have messed up your paint job. Okay, while we're waiting on the hardware to dry, I've just cleaned it and I've got it drying. I'm going to go ahead and add a few little antique gold details to this piece. Not too showy. I don't want it to be all gold and bright. I just want just a little aging to it. So I have an antique gold rub and buff that I'm going to use to do that with. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the hinges. I think the hinges need a bit, bit of a touch up. So, and I've got just a tiny little artist brush to do that. Now we're just going to put a little bit down here on these. This piece is already sealed, so if I don't like it, I can always remove it, which is why you want to seal before you put on waxes. Oh, I think that's pretty good. Don't want anything too much. A little bit across this molding. If you get too much, it's okay. Mineral spirits will take off wax. Also, clear wax will take off wax. Now that the hardware is done and put back on the piece, we're ready for the final reveal. And I think this piece just turned out adorable. I absolutely love it. I don't know that I can actually let this one go. Would this not be the perfect cabinet for a massage therapist or a yoga studio with essential oils in it? It would be perfect in a bathroom for toiletries, extra tissue. It is so cute. And if all else fails, you could always use it as the liquor cabinet. We did hit the hinges with some gold rub and buff. I also hit the hardware with some gold rub and buff. Um, just barely tapped it because they were already um, kind of a brass color. So it's all finished and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I had a great time doing this one and if you found it helpful please remember to hit the like and subscribe button give us a thumbs up and give us a comment if you feel like it really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm thank you